Hi there, I'm Michael Suba, president of Continental Hair. Today, I'd like to teach you how to wash a wig. I know a tutorial like that may sound really simple, but we're not talking about just any wig. We're talking about a top-of-the-line virgin European human hair wig. Uh, this is something that we're quite famous for uh, all over the world. We have women coming to us from Europe, from all over Canada and the United States, to get these. And so we want to make sure that everyone uh, that wants one or has one knows exactly how to take care of one. Uh, briefly, uh, the reason why they're special, uh, one of the reasons anyway, is the hair. This is how we get our hair. Uh, it still has the cuticle on it. The cuticle are those scales that run along uh, the hair shaft. You might notice uh, uh, if you get a close-up photograph of a hair shaft, it's got these scales or ridges all the way along and they all go in one direction. And I remember my father telling me that, uh, well years ago, um, they used the term Remy to make sure as a, a term that all the cuticles are going in the same direction, that there is root to root and tip to tip. And that's very important because of course if you have those mixed up, they will tangle and barb and you just simply do not want that. So when you have Remy hair and you hand knot it into a cap for a wig, the returns, what I call the returns, are going in opposite directions. And so at that point, it's a danger zone because if you wash it improperly, those are going to start to mat and tangle or go through the cap or any number of nasty things. So we want to make sure that each of our wigs are taken care of properly and they have a nice long life and they look good. Uh, so we're going to go through a relatively simple process of how to take care of them and how to wash them and, and, and style them. The first thing we want to do is get a really good shampoo. You want a high quality shampoo, something out of a salon. Um, there is no real uh, wig shampoo uh, that's uh, formulated specifically for uh, wigs like these, but you want to have something that is high quality, so something that you'd use on your own hair or that your stylist would use on your own hair. So we, uh, we like the Kevin Murphy line, but there's plenty of others that'll work for you as well. There's no one shampoo that is specific for this. You want to put a little bit of shampoo uh, in the basin uh, and then uh, fill it with water. Something uh, not too warm, uh, you know, the type of temperature that you'd use on your own hair. So after you've got your shampoo water, basically I like to take the wig and using my thumb and forefinger, place them at the part so I never forget where the part is and I never have to search for it later. So you hold it like that and basically what you're going to do now is simply dip the wig in the water. You don't want to do anything rough with it. You just want to let the shampoo and the water work with it. You just immerse it and dip it. That's all. Just immerse it and dip it. And after a few times like that, that is going to clean. After just a few minutes, you certainly don't want to squeeze it or agitate it up at the cap. If you want to squeeze the end or something, that's fine. But up here, that's where danger can happen. And we want to make sure that we just leave that alone and let the shampoo and the water do its work. So now it's clean. What you're going to want to do now is put fresh water into the basin. So now you want to condition it. So what you do is you get professional grade conditioner and you put some of that into the water. Now conditioner doesn't dissolve quite as easily as shampoo. So you have to really make sure that it mixes in and blends. Basically we're going to repeat exactly what we did before with the shampoo water. Now we've got conditioner water. We're just going to dip it. Conditioner works very quickly, so you don't have to do it for a very long period of time. Basically three or four dips and you can feel how nice the hair is to the touch. And then you're ready to rinse. It's great if you have one of these hoses. Um, it makes it a lot easier to rinse 
what you're going to do, same temperature water, and you rinse root to tip. Just go down like that. You're going to want to get as much conditioner out of the hair as possible. It will look cleaner and stay cleaner longer. It's also just overall better for the hair. You're not going to get every single bubble out, but you try. Again, you're not doing anything that would agitate the roots in the cap. Squeeze the ends a little bit just to get some excess there, but not the cap. And then you're going to pat it dry. And the last thing that you have to be worried about is when you brush it out, I like to use what some people call a vent brush. Basically, see, I know where my part is, and I can start at the root. A lot of women, when they have long hair, will start at the tips and move up. But because problems can begin at the cap, I like to brush it out from the root, just to make sure that the roots are done first. And you just go all the way along. And you can see that the brush is falling through easily. There's no more danger then you know you're ready for styling. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to blow dry. Okay, so the first step is to put the wig onto the, the canvas block or a styrofoam head and then you're going to pin it on the two flaps on the wig. So stay away from any pinning in the parting on the top. You don't want any holes in the parting. So once the wig is pinned onto the canvas block or foam head, then you're going to brush it out. Okay. Making sure that everything is untangled. Okay. Then we begin blow drying. When we're blow drying, I like to start at the fringe or the bang. Using a smaller medium round brush. So after blow drying the fringe, we're going to go around and using smaller sections. I'm going to start from the bottom. You can use the same round brush or you can switch to a bigger one. Basically, you're going to move around the wig, working your way from one side to the other using a round brush. It all depends on the desired look that you want. If you want more volume and a smoother look, the round brush is the best way to go. Another important thing to remember about the blow dryer is to make sure that you have a concentrator. So what it's going to do is going to concentrate the heat wherever you're blow drying. So it's going to help with the smoothness and the defrizzing of your hair. Your next step after the blow drying, we're going to smooth it out just for the extra sheen in the, in the wig. So again, you're going to start in smaller sections, starting from the bottom, pinning it up. You can use a round brush or you can use um, a tail comb to flat iron. When you're smoothing out the hair, you don't need to go all the way to the base to smooth it out, just from mid shaft to the ends, if you still want to keep the volume and have a little bit of smoothness. So the last step, after blow drying and smoothing it out, you just Sometimes it can be a little bit wet inside. So what you're going to do is you're just going to put the blow dryer through it. And it's okay if it seems a little, it's just the, the cap drying. Okay, and we recommend that you wash your wig at least once a month or whenever you feel necessary. So there you have it. Not nearly as complicated as one might have thought, but it is important uh, to make sure that these wigs always look good and last as long as possible. 
Uh, if you have any questions, if you have any concerns, please give us a call or an email and let us know. We'll get right back to you.